in this tutorial, uh, I shall take you through how you can perform rendering of line work using Photoshop. So I have some line work here, a PDF copy of line work here. So this one I did using Photoshop, I mean AutoCAD. Uh, this line work is actually drawn using AutoCAD and uh, it is traced over an image of a place in Kisumu. So this part of the line work represents uh, Lake Victoria. And then this uh, downside of this uh, image represents the Kisumu town, um, the Kisumu city. And uh, this is actually Kisumu stadium and uh, all these are roads and roundabouts and so on. So this is the line work which will be performing some rendering using Photoshop. This is just introduction to rendering. It's not really any complicated. It is just an introduction on how, on how to perform any rendering using Photoshop. So I have some textures, of course, to do any rendering, you need to have some textures. So I have some textures here, which uh, we will use uh, when we'll be performing renders. And uh, you can download these textures from textures.com. You can select any uh, of your preferred texture uh, at textures.com uh, to be able to follow through uh, this tutorial. And again, uh, I will also include this uh, PDF of uh, my line work in the description so that you can download it uh, for the purpose of your practice. It will be in the description. Okay, so here I have Photoshop open uh, and uh, you can see I have opened a new, uh, a new paper here. So if I was to remove this, uh, I will be prompted to create new. So if you're opening for the first time, you'll be prompted to create new and uh, you can select your paper size from here and you can just click uh, create. I just selected an A4 and uh, it's good practice of course to save uh, before maybe even you start. It's good to ensure that uh, you save your work before you start. So I'll just save this one as a, a practice and I will save it actually as a Photoshop document and I will click uh, on save. And um, you can see it has been uh, saved. So now to perform a uh, uh, rendering, we will just be adding layers here today. We will just be adding some layers on this uh, layers panel here. So you have to ensure you are in the layers here. So we will be adding the layers here. You can see by default, we have a background layer, uh, which by the way, uh, is the default layer. So this layer, we will add a layer for the line work, another layer for the textures uh, that we shall be using. So. Uh, to add this uh, line work as a layer here, I will come to file and then select place linked. Uh, I will come to where I have my line work uh, in the desktop. Uh, if mine is in the de desktop PDFs. I will navigate there very fast and I believe it's that one. And uh, once that uh, is uh, done loading, you will be able to see uh, this one is not really the one I wanted to place. Let me see. Uh, this one is something that has been rendered. So this is not really what I wanted to place. So uh, I'll just uh, delete this layer. So I realized it is loading a lot. I realized I might have named them the, named them, uh, the same way. So let me uh, select uh, another one. So uh, let me check if it is this one. Yes, it is this one. This is how it's supposed to open. So this is the first page and then it's only one page and I will click okay to add that. So I can adjust it to fit using these grips. So to adjust it to fit in my paper, I just use the, the grips and then move using my mouse. And once I'm done, I can check this uh, to confirm. And then from here, uh, I can see now my layer of Kisumu line work has been added uh, to the layers. And then once this one is added, uh, you can see I can be able to turn it on and off using that eye icon. So once that has been added, I also want to add one texture for this uh, lake part here. So that part which is actually selected right now is uh, the part which is having a, a texture of a lake. So I want to look for a texture which will best uh, represent this part. So I'll come to file uh, using the same procedure will uh, place linked and I will navigate now to where my textures are. Uh, I have actually added textures as a folder. I like keeping my textures in one folder. 
so that I don't mess uh, my, I don't uh, find it hard to find uh, where I have placed my textures. So I can see now that our texture has been added. I want this texture to actually represent a lake. So once I'm comfortable with whether it's fitting in my line work, I want it to come up to this region. So I have to drag it there. Once I'm comfortable with the position, I can just tick. And you can see there's a problem. It has already obstructed our line work. So this is where we use this uh, turning on and off of a layer. So we can turn it off so that it can stop obstructing us. But before we do uh, anything else, the first thing I would love to mention is that you right click on this layer and make it rasterized so that once it is rasterized, you can be able to easily uh, edit this layer if you were to edit. Uh, like if you are going to cut, we are going to cut this layer uh, using this uh, using this region, which is uh, sorry, 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 using this uh, region in uh, in uh, I did some selection there. I did not want to select that region, so you can be able to perform uh, a cut using this boundary here. So you can be able to easily perform a cut using that boundary and that cut uh, will only cut if the image is uh, actually rasterized, okay? So now that this region is selected, I know maybe you are wondering how I have done that. To select this region, you come to this panel here. By default, you will be in move. So to be able to select it, you can come here and pick this option for magic wand tool. Uh, that you can see it is giving you some kind of preview of how it will happen. Alternatively, you can just press W on your keyboard uh, to activate the command of uh, uh, the wand tool, okay? So once you pick your wand tool, come and select your object like that, you'll be able to select it. And of course you will select the object in the current layer. So like you can see now the Kisumu is the layer that is selected here, so it is the current layer. And you can see I have selected that part uh, in the layer of Kisumu line one. So now I will come to this uh, layer for the image and turn it on. I make it the current layer and turn it on. Now I want to perform this cut using this uh, line, line that has been selected. So I can just press delete. But once I press delete, you realize it is not uh, cutting the image like the, this, the place that has been deleted is actually not the one I want to be deleted. I want to invert this selection so that the part that has remained is the part which should actually be deleted. So I will control Z to undo. To perform an, in, uh, an invert, inversion, you press control, shift and I, that will invert. And then I will just click on delete and you will be able to see it has deleted that uh, after inverting it, it has deleted it that way. And you can see now my texture for the lake uh, has been successfully inserted. Now the same procedure is followed to add any other texture. Like I would love to add uh, a texture for this area surrounding the lake. So I will just come to, sorry, I click package, uh, file, and then place linked. And then uh, I will select another texture. I believe this one will represent that uh, in a better way. So let me place it. However, I will have to reduce this because the, magni the magnitude of this will be very big once I cut. So I don't want the magnitude to be very big. I want to reduce this one to a smaller size so that those sand, actually they look more sandy, sandy. They represent some kind of a sand around this region. So I want to use that uh, texture to represent this, la, these places near the lake. So I will position it there and I will check that. Okay, so, and then I will ensure I'm using my move tool. And then the next thing I would love to do is actually to create some pattern using this because now this one is very small. I have to create several. Uh, patterns here so that uh, it can be big and fit in all this space. So to do that, I should duplicate this layer first. So I will select it and control J to duplicate it. So what that does will add a copy of this uh, layer here. You can see this one is a copy 
And if I was to move here and you will be able to see that actually uh, there's another copy of this that has been added and I will press shift to lock it on the X. Uh, you can press shift again to still lock it on the Y, uh, but I want to lock it on the X. And then once it is locked, I can see I want to create a pattern. So I will join these two layers. So I'll press shift, I select the first one and the second one, and I will press control E to join them into one. You can see they have joined uh, into one layer. Now, if I was to move it, it will be moving as one layer. So once that is done, uh, I will again control J to duplicate that layer. And um, I will follow the same procedure until I achieve something that will be uh, big enough uh, to represent my, to, to be able for me to be able to use it to uh, render my, my regions near that leg. So uh, I'm following the same, same, same procedure. So control J to duplicate. Once the duplicate has been created, I use shift to lock it. And then I select these two layers, control E to join them, control J to duplicate it again. And I can create a pattern using this. And you can see it is actually forming some kind of a pattern. And uh, this pattern uh, is somehow seamless. Uh, it's not really seamless, but uh, somehow uh, it's representing what I want it to represent. Uh, actually, I want that, uh, this should be my last duplicate. So I want to use this to represent uh, that place. I don't want to use this part. Uh, this one, I will give it a different texture. I just want to use this uh, uh, part here. So I can be able to uh, unselect, uh, I'm a, remove that layer first to be able to see my line work and then make line work my current layer. Using the magic wand tool here, I select this region. I want to insert that texture in that region, that region, that region, that region, and uh, let me check any other region. No, that region is not cool. So let me select this region here, again, not cool. So the reason why I am undoing those ones is because they are not selecting the way I expect uh, because the line work was done, uh, was not really done uh, the way I would expect. Okay, so once that is selected, I can now bring up my image and uh, I will make it the current layer. I invert the selection and delete uh, to insert that texture there. So once that texture has been added there, I will again come and place a texture for the rest. I will use one texture for the rest of these uh, other parts here. I will just use one texture uh, to save on time. And uh, uh, I believe I will, be, I will have introduced uh, the concept of placing textures in Photoshop. So I will use uh, some texture, which is uh, green. I will use green to represent uh, the green spaces. So, I will use this green and uh, again, you can see it has some lines. I don't want this magnitude of these lines to be very big. So I'll just reduce it and uh, move it uh, up here. Let me see, let me move it up here and select okay. Again, the same procedure I will use to duplicate this. I will use my move tool to, to move this uh, and I will select the two textures and I will join them. And I will repeat the same process until I have covered a bigger part uh, of my, the places where I want to, to create these, uh, to insert this texture. So uh, you realize the more I keep joining them, uh, the more bigger it gets and the more easier it becomes uh, to perform uh, that uh, rendering. So it is not, it's not really stressful because the, the bigger it gets, uh, if you are to create a duplicate, uh, the bigger the duplicate will be. So it will be able to, to move, to help us move faster. So you can see now this duplicate is actually the same as that. So it's allowing me to move faster. So, and, uh, I will do the same. This should be the last duplicate. 
and I will select and uh, control E to join them. So once that is done, uh, if I was to come here and try to rasterize the layer, you realize that the layer is already rasterized because I have already made some changes to the layer, so it's already uh, rasterized. So the next thing I will love to do is actually to come and uh, maybe uh, turn that layer off, make this my current layer, the line work, and I will select using the magic wand tool all the places where I want to insert that texture with some kind of a green, uh, green effect. So I want to insert it there, 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 here as well, here, 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 any other place which I want to, to be green, I just click on this and uh, I'll be able to insert that green uh, in all those places. So yeah, even the smallest of them also, like this one here, if I was to zoom in, so to zoom in in Photoshop, you scroll using your wheel, but ensure you have Alt pressed, press Alt, so that you don't lose, uh, you don't lose, uh, so, so that you can be able to select. Again, to select multiple uh, files the way I'm doing, the multiple points the way I'm doing, you have to press Shift so that you don't release uh, the initial selection. So those are the places where I want to insert that green texture. So I will bring my texture back now and uh, I will make that texture, uh, that texture green, the current layer. I will invert the selection and delete. And you can see that texture has been inserted in those places. And if I was to deselect here, you can see those textures have been ins inserted and you can see we are already achieving some kind of a render for Kisumu. So this is a part of a stadium and these some roads, I will keep roads as white. The only thing I will do is to drop a shadow for, the, for these roads just for the purpose of keeping it more neat. And this part I want to use a more conch green because I realized there's a part of the forest in my real image uh, that is around here. Uh, so I want to represent that part with the forest with the green, which is a bit uh, more pronounced. So I will come and place linked I'll uh, place a green which is more concentrated, uh, a green like, uh, like, let me see which green is more, con no, which green is more concentrated here. Yeah, let me select this one. I hope this one will represent, uh, not really, but I will use it anyway. I will use it anyway. And, um, and, um, I will not really scale these up because I also want to save on time. I don't want to make a long video. So uh, to save on time, I'll just, I will not uh, create a seamless pattern for these. So once that layer is inserted, I can come and rasterize it. And then once it's rasterized, I can come and uh, uh, and check it so that it stops obstructing my workspace. And then I will select that, uh, make line work the current layer, select that, that place where I want to insert that texture. I can bring up my texture. I can invert the selection and delete. And you can see it saying that uh, this, the, the, it will not complete because the smart is not directly editable. That means uh, the layer which is current is actually not the image layer the layer I'm trying to edit is actually Kisumu. So I have to make this on my current layer. So if you see that error, it, it means that uh, maybe you are not, you are in the wrong, you are in the wrong uh, layer. So uh, that is what I wanted to represent. Uh, that region I realized it's more of a big forest. So that is how I wanted to perform the render for that, uh, for that area. So we were able to achieve the rendering of that uh, city. However, it's not very accurate, it's not very smooth. I just wanted to use this as an introduction of how you can perform rendering. And you can see this rendering, the way it has been achieved. Uh, it has been achieved, it's actually bringing more meaning to the line work than it, it was before. Uh, the spaces that are green are actually uh, better represented here than in the line work. Uh, and again, this was actually an introduction. I just wanted to introduce you guys to how you can perform those uh, invert those uh, inserting, uh, placing a, a texture and all that. 
just wanted to introduce you guys to maybe how you can create a pattern like the one we created uh, for this place with some sand here. And um, simply the basics of how to perform a rendering. And I hope you guys were able to follow. Uh, this marks the end of this tutorial. Uh, this is the final uh, output we have uh, managed to make. And I hope uh, this uh, tutorial was worth your time. Thank you very much. We shall meet uh, in the next one.